Hey, welcome to this special edition of Extreme Reloading. You know, if you're a subscriber to our channel or if you watch our channel quite a lot, you might remember that a couple of months ago I purchased a brand new Barrett MRAD rifle in 300 PRC and a couple of videos uh, out on that already. And one of the things that I'm planning on doing, I mentioned also earlier, I'm planning on reloading for that uh, cartridge, 300 PRC, but I realize it's going to take me a little while to accumulate and acquire all the things necessary. Well, over the holiday break, over the Christmas break, I was lucky enough through Creedmoor Sports to find some and purchase some Peterson brass. Peterson. Now, this is one of those uh, companies or brands of brass, premium brass. I've never had a chance to use it. I wanted to get some 308 Winchester large rifle primer size. It was so hard to find. Never did find it. I guess there's, there might be some out there right now. But um, I found this, 300 PRC. This is the topic of today's video. We're going to be evaluating that 300 PRC Peterson brass. And when I evaluate brass, I look for consistency. You've heard me talk about consistency tremendously. Consistency equals accuracy. Kind of has become my mantra over the years. Well, what do we mean by consistency of brass? And number one, premium brass tends to be far more consistent, more uniform than standard or non-premium brass. Things like Hornady, Remington, Winchester, Starline, and so on. Uh, so here we have some premium brass, and you'll notice I also have out here some Lapua brass, also in 300 PRC. And we'll be comparing the Peterson brass to Lapua. I have been using Lapua brass for a long time, easily a decade, maybe two decades. I have a lot of confidence in Lapua brass. It has really done well for me. Um, but I have never, as I alluded to earlier, never had a chance to actually use Peterson brass. And I still haven't loaded it, but what I have done is I am looking at the evaluation of the consistency of this brass. So, what am I looking for? Number one, I am looking for case weight uniformity. So this is a box of 50 pieces of brass, 100 pieces of brass for the Lapua. And um, I weighed every single one of these pieces of brass. In fact, um, I found out that I got a little lucky. I got 101 pieces of Lapua brass for the price of 100, so that's kind of cool. Doesn't happen all the time, but I apologize if you're one of those folks who got 99. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen, actually. Okay, so I'm looking at case weight uniformity, measuring it to a tenth of a grain on my electronic scale. And then the second thing that I'm looking at, item number two, or criteria number two, is neck thickness, and of course, uniformity of neck thickness. Now, I look at these two in particular because one, the case weight will tell me a couple of things. Normally, it, it relates pretty strongly to case volume. I know there are folks out there who like to weigh the volume of water, some sort of liquid uh, that, that that case can hold. That has never worked out very well for me because it's not a very repeatable measure. We've talked about that in earlier uh, episodes of Extreme Reloading, so I'm not going to um, bemoan that too much. And the second measure, the case neck thickness, uh, that is also a very important measure uh, because it tells us some things about how uniform the neck tension will be applied and when I finally load those rounds and, probably more importantly, how uniform that bullet will be released from the mouth. And that very first start, when that bullet actually moves, starts moving from the case and uh, leaves the mouth, that is so important. That's really an important part uh, to the, the final 
in a point of impact on target. So that's a pretty important, maybe uh, an even more important part than case volume, but uh, I'm not convinced of that. Both of those are very important measures. So what I have done, as, as I alluded to, I have measured every one or weighed every one of those cases. And as I'm doing this, I kind of create a little living histogram, as you can see. And this is really kind of helpful for me also because it shows me, um, allows me to visualize the distribution of the different weights of these brass cases. And as you can see, there are some on the tails of this histogram. And then I'm using my Mitutoyo um, tube uh, gauge micrometer uh, to measure the thickness of those cases. It's, it's a tedious uh, process, a tedious measurement. So I am doing 30 cases of each. And then, of course, all of those results are entered into, I put them into Excel spreadsheet, and then I'm analyzing, statistically analyzing, the, uh, these cases. So let's take a look at the results of all these measurements. Here we're looking at the distribution of case weights. The green bars are for the Peterson brass, the blue bars for Lapua. One thing you'll notice, and I noticed immediately as I'm doing this, is that the Lapua brass is much heavier than the Peterson brass. That's not necessarily good or bad, but it's something that we really got to pay attention to when we load these cases. In fact, because of that difference in case weights, that tells me that I need to work up my powder charges separately for Peterson brass versus Lapua brass. I am not going to get the same, I highly doubt I'm going to get the same optimal charge weight in Peterson versus um, the Lapua brass. So I've got to make sure that I, uh, I take care of that uh, individually. The other thing that I look at is how similar is the mean or the average on the left side of the graph, how similar is that to the median shown on the right side? You should notice that the height of those bars is more different for the Peterson brass than it is for the Lapua brass. And in fact, the difference is inverted. Notice that the mean weight of the Lapua brass is lower than the median, whereas the mean weight of the Peterson brass is higher than its median. Now, what does all that mean? Well, the fact that one's higher versus lower, that's not really terribly important. What we like to see in extremely uniform or consistent brass is we like to see the mean be identical or as much as possible uh, the same as the median. Okay? Um, and actually, when I measured 101 pieces of this Lapua brass, the Lapua brass is slightly more consistent. Uh, when we look at the standard deviation especially, that's what it's telling us. It's slightly more consistent than the Peterson brass. Now let's take a look at the neck thickness. And on this graph, we're using the same colors. Green is the Peterson brass. Blue is the Lapua. The mean on the left. The median on the right. Once again, the similarity between the Lapua mean, the mean of Lapua brass, and the median of Lapua brass, really, really similar. More difference in case neck thickness with the Peterson brass. But we're really only talking about one one thousandth of an inch difference in the standard deviation of those two brands of brass. Probably nothing to really worry about. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about regarding these two different brands of brass is Lapua, it comes in a sturdy plastic case, but all of the brass is just packed loosely in these cases, just like that. And uh, as I tried to point out or pointed out in that video of our living histogram, a couple of these cases had dented necks, so I've got to make sure, and I will, 
uh, make sure that I fix that before I actually load them. The Peterson also comes in a nice sturdy plastic case. Really like this case. Plus, they've already got this nice piece of foam in here. And, and if they don't have it, I always put a, a chunk of foam just like this in my cases. Why? Because when I load these things, now these are my premium, my precision rifle brass cases. I, I load cases like this for my 243 Winchester, 308 Winchester, and I will be reloading these 300 PRC. When I load these, I'll store them bullets up, and I don't want to deform my MEP plot. I want to keep that MEP plot in, in as perfect condition as possible. The polymer tipped MEP plots or the aluminum tipped MEP plots, not such a big deal. Um, but uh, I'm not so keen on the open tipped match if I just kind of handle them roughly. Maybe that's reloader voodoo, I don't know. But I like to really, really take care of my precision rifle cases once I get them loaded until the time that I um, shoot them or fire them out at the range or wherever I am. That's a big plus for the Peterson. Price-wise, pretty similar. Uh, slight differences. You might find one on sale uh, that's going to beat then the price of the other, so gobble it up. Um, and I'm really excited to actually try both of these uh, brass in my 300 PRC, see what kind of precision I can get out of both of those. Maybe one will actually work out better for my particular rifle and my particular load. Well, that is my relatively quick evaluation of Peterson brass for the 300 PRC, a little bit of a comparison to Lapua brass. Thanks a bunch for watching. Hey, if you've got questions, comments, anything like that, pop those into the comment section. Take care.